In this video, I'll show you how to make a forest floor terrarium that's home to some beautiful and amazing creatures. Let's get straight into the build. I'm going to be using this 20cm cube tank. I'm going to place this light on for the purpose of the build, but it will be sat under some rack lighting in the future. My idea for this build is to make a forest floor themed terrarium that can be viewed from pretty much any angle. I'm going to start off with the drainage layer. For this, I'm going to use leaker. You can use pretty much any rocks or stones that you've got lying around. As you may already know, a drainage layer is a place for excess water to sit. If the water was to sit in the substrate, it would quickly stagnate and cause a quick end to the terrarium's life. I poured in a good amount and then used the back of my hand to flatten it out to make sure there was no high or low points. For a terrarium this size, you really don't need this layer to be too thick. I cut this window screen mesh to size and I'm going to place it inside on top of the drainage layer. This is a substrate barrier. It will help prevent the substrate from getting down into the drainage layer. Now it's time to get the substrate in. I'm going to use my usual terrarium substrate mix. I'll put it up on screen now if you want to try making it yourself. It's a quality mix that's ideal for use inside terrariums. I poured in a small amount and then used my hand to spread it out and gently pat it down into place. I usually recommend to slope the substrate up towards the back to create a good sense of depth. But as I want this terrarium to be viewable from every angle, I'm going to keep it flat. Now it's time for the hardscape. I've got this really nice piece of driftwood that I've had for a few years and now I'm going to finally put it to use. It did take me a little bit of time to find a good place for it to sit. I came up with this and I'm really happy with it. It creates some dramatic shadows towards the back and has some great detail in the front and sides. I originally planned to add a little more hardscape, but I liked how it looked so much I left as it is. Now I'm going to pour in some more substrate to build up some more height around the driftwood. Once again, I gently compressed it into place. I did the same in the back of the terrarium. Having more substrate will make planting later on much easier. It will also provide plants with nutrients that they can use in the future and ensure the terrarium's long-term success. As you can see, it's pretty much flat on the edges with it sloping up towards the driftwood. With that done, I now want to cover the entire substrate in leaf litter. I've got a variety of different leaves with most of them being oak. At the moment, they're completely dried out. I like to put them in a tub and saturate them with water. I feel they sit much more naturally when they're a bit softer. I poured in some water, made sure they were all submersed and then let them sit for about half an hour. Half an hour later, I drained out the water and they were fully saturated and ready to be used. Next, I went on to placing them inside the terrarium. Obviously in nature, leaves fall randomly. So I didn't give too much thought to their placement and just threw in a few handfuls. I did tear up a few here and there to get a variety of size. Once the leaf litter was in, I used a stick with a cork on the end to flatten them down onto the substrate. I'm really liking how this terrarium's looking so far and it is looking like a forest floor. At this point, I felt like it needed a little more detail and interest. These acorn caps and sticks would solve that problem easily. I placed them throughout the terrarium and once again I didn't overthink their placement. Now it's time to bring some life into the terrarium with some plants. I'm going to start with this small Boston fern. I'm going to plant it just behind the driftwood. With some long tweezers I dig a hole into the substrate and then plant the fern into it. If you're enjoying this video or finding it useful be sure to give it a like. Next I'm going to plant these asparagus ferns. There are slightly different species to the asparagus ferns I've used in the past but I think they'll be perfect for this terrarium. I decided to pull out the Boston fern and plant one of the asparagus ferns in its place. I then followed the same process to plant the other asparagus fern in this area here. The terrarium has already sprung to life. Now I'm going to replant the Boston fern in this hole on the driftwood. I firstly took some sphagnum moss and wedged it inside the hole. And then I took the Boston fern and planted it into the sphagnum moss. Sticking with ferns, I've got some small eyelash ferns that I think will bring some nice detail and interest amongst the leaves. As I've already mentioned, I want this terrarium to be viewable from all angles, which is why I'm not going too overboard with the planting. Now it's time for the moss. I'm going to use this patch here, which seems to be a mix of a few different species. I'm mainly going to plant it down the centre of the driftwood. If I placed it on there as it is, it would be prone to drying out as there's no substrate. A quick and easy fix to this is a few patches of sphagnum moss. It's great at holding and retaining moisture, which the moss sitting on top will certainly be grateful for. 
Next, I'm tearing off a few chunks of moss and placing it on top of the sphagnum moss. This was easy as placing it on top and gently pushing it down. The moss will wick up water from the sphagnum, which will keep it damp and promote new growth. I'm hoping this moss will slowly spread and creep along the driftwood. I'm also going to place a small patch on top of the exposed roots of the Boston fern. This will cover up the roots and keep them damp and promote new growth. I love the look of the moss growing on the driftwood and it really is starting to look like a slice of the forest floor. Now I'm going to plant a few cuttings of Ficus quercifolia. This is a slow growing small leafed climbing plant that would add some nice details to the scape. I planted a few cuttings in various locations around the terrarium. This is a great plant for a terrarium such as this as its small leaf size really helps bring a good sense of scale to the tank. Next I placed in a few chestnuts to add some more variety throughout the leaf litter. At this point the terrarium is really starting to come together. Next I went on and gave the entire terrarium a good spray down. As you may have heard me say before it's very important not to overwater. A fine mist spray bottle comes in handy with this. After cleaning off the glass here's how the terrarium's looking. It looks great but now it's time to start adding some life. I'm going to start off with the springtails. These are tiny bugs that will literally clean the terrarium 24-7. Their population will self-regulate depending on available food. This is great as you've never got to worry about them overpopulating the terrarium. They're already exploring and getting to work. Now it's time to add the beautiful creatures I made this terrarium for. I've got 12 of these stunning isopods, or at least that's what I thought. I got these isopods from Antscapes. They've got a ton of different critters and isopods which are all great for terrariums. They've also got some great terrarium builds over on their YouTube channel. I'll put a link to their website and YouTube channel in the description below. I put all the isopods I could find in this small cup and then gently put them inside the terrarium. Some of them did need a little bit of encouraging. They all began exploring right away. When I went back to the tub to collect the rest, I noticed something moving inside the substrate. To my surprise, they've had some tiny, cute babies. When looking closer, I noticed loads of them and I wasn't sure how I was going to get them all inside the terrarium. The only way I can guarantee that they all went inside the terrarium is if I poured in the entire tub. I removed the leaf litter from the back and went on to carefully pour the isopod culture in. I did this bit by bit to make sure all of them went inside their new home. Once the culture tub was empty, I carefully sloped the substrate up to the centre and put the leaf litter back inside. As I want this terrarium to be viewable from all angles, I decided to get one of these turntables. I placed it on top and it can be easily spun so I can view the terrarium from any angle I want. I then removed the light and placed on a glass lid. This isn't airtight and there are some gaps where it sits on the glass. Not big enough for anything to escape, but still enough for some slight air circulation. It was great to see the isopods exploring their new home already. Let me know in the comments what else you think I should add inside this terrarium. Thanks for watching this video. Check out this one to watch me make a terrarium that even has a flowing stream.